All right. Um, well, welcome everyone to Fridays with Fiscal. It has been a while, so I hope everyone had a good um, end to your fiscal year. And um, today we are going to be talking about options for sharing reports with districts or with district personnel rather. So you have your um, your core treasurer's office that logs into USAS. I'm sure they have the reports that they use regularly. But what we're going to be talking about today is more so sharing reports with uh, maybe people who aren't usually in the system. So your principals, your secretaries, um, people who manage student activities or athletics, they may need to see reports sometimes so that they um, can keep an eye on their budget, uh, they can appropriately put in purchase orders and manage their spending. Um, in Classic, this was something that they sometimes did through uh, FiscWeb or some districts may have had some other way that they managed this. Maybe they made um, spreadsheets or reports, maybe they ran reports and sent them to them. So that's what we're talking about, um, just kind of in the context of all of these reports that we're gonna look at. So of course, I'm starting on the wiki page like always. And um, in preparation for this, I actually uh, was reviewing one of our documentation pages that we have in our appendix. So if I go to the USSR documentation, and I'm going straight down to the appendix under the report procedures. And we have this page in here for financial report set up for district personnel. Now this page has been there. Um, this is something that Michelle made a while ago. Um, we did have a Fridays with Fiscal probably more than a year ago um, where we went through this, but um, I updated it recently, like this week, to add some of these other options that we're gonna be talking about today because we do still have the option to set something up like Classic FiscWeb, but in the last year, SSDT has added um, a lot of other features that can also be used for this. So we're going to talk about not only giving them direct access to USSR to run specific reports, um, but we're also going to touch on maybe if they want to send them via email or um, if they want to create a report link and uh, maybe utilize that for sharing reports. All right, so let's see. I wanted to note before we jump straight into just talking and, and talking about uh, the specifics here and looking at these different options. Before you start any of these, um, I would definitely suggest uh, working with your district, um, reviewing if they do have FiscWeb, reviewing what reports they have out there. Um, maybe what users need access to them, and really making a plan. Because as we go through this process, you're going to see that they have options. Um, so definitely getting all your ducks in a row to start and making sure that you know which, which users, which reports you need. Um, a lot of times with FiscWeb, those uh, may have had, well, in, in the nature of these reports in general, if they're managing grant accounts, those may be specific to a certain fiscal year. So if that's the case, there may be old accounts that are still listed on those report parameters, uh, maybe special cost centers that were specific to an old year. So really when you're getting started, there may be some cleanup that you need to account for right off the bat. All right. <clears throat> so this first part is financial reports via direct use SR access. Um, we have a screenshot of our homepage here. So what this means is that we're gonna talk about where they actually will go into redesign, they can log in, maybe it's only to the main page. Um, I probably could have modified this screenshot a little bit, maybe I'll update it, because they probably won't have all these menu options because um, we're gonna talk about how to give them restricted access so that they can um, just focus on the reports that they need. Um, but so this will be a general guideline uh, to follow when setting up financial report access um, to directly log in. Um, as an ITC, you can definitely customize these steps as we go through them. Um, it's kind of in the order here where we're going to logically talk about, you know, um, making a user account, we're going to talk about assigning access and maybe some setup steps. But as we go through this, I'm sure you'll be able to see that these don't have to specifically be done in this order. <laughs> um, well, we're going to talk about the user account first, but then a role. Um, so if you already have an existing role or you want to make that 
uh, ahead of time, you definitely have flexibility in this process. I'm starting with the user accounts and uh, for this part, <laughs> we have an option immediately. <laughs> um, when creating the user accounts, um, there are two different general ideas that you can stick to with this. Um, the first thing is a standard account. So in classic, um, mostly what I saw with FiskWeb is that they may have a couple different um, sections within their FISC web. They have their athletics, they have their student activities, they have um, special ed or their different buildings. And to access each one of those locations, um, they would have a logging, they would have a credential. So maybe it was, um, you know, athletics and then they have a blanket password for that. Um, they could still do that. So um, if they have a standard account that's just something like, you know, their district digits and then it's called athletics, that is definitely still an option. And then the other one is to actually make individual accounts. So now that you're in redesign um, and maybe especially for districts that didn't have this web set up before, but they want to do something like this, uh, you can actually make a user account with that person's name and give them their own specific credentials and then still be able to assign this special access uh, to their account. Okay. So uh, if they're using a standard account, and we're, we are going to hop into the system, don't worry, and, and look at some of this stuff. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if they are using a standard account, if they had FiskWeb in Classic, uh, there's a possibility that they may have had USA security filters. So um, not just necessarily that they had the username set up uh, and were using it for FiskWeb, but specifically if they had a USA security filter. The filter names do uh, come into redesign and create a user account on import, but they're not active. So, this is something that you can review for ahead of time and see if, if possibly these are there. If the district has something like this set up, then you um, can go in, you could modify the username, you can double check the filter, um, and you may already have something to start with here. You would need to enable any of these though that they do want to continue to use or start using with redesign rather. And if they were not used, then um, what you would want to do then is create new users and use us for each of those accounts. And this is where I'm going to hop over. So um, in my admin account, I would go to system users. And I have some example ones already made here. So we're going to filter down. Okay. So this is an example of the standard. I have an activities account that is SS activities. I would give that a standard password. Um, and then anybody who needed to access the activities in that, uh, the reports for activities in that district, they would, um, that you could provide the credentials for that account to them and they would be able to log in. The next one we're going to look at and we kind of talked about it briefly already, um, but we're almost to this section, so I might as well pull it up, is the individual accounts. So here are the examples of that. So basically this is, all right, Jesse Jones is my high school secretary, so he needs access to these reports. Um, he's gonna log in with his own unique username and password um, for ST Jones. When you're setting these up, when you're managing these, um, and we'll talk about like ongoing management of all of, you know, the reports and everything in general, uh, but specifically to the user accounts, if you do it this way, you can manage this just how um, your ITC would normally manage user accounts. So here's our section for the individual accounts. Um, yeah, I kind of put a note in here, this, uh, you know, if you have individual accounts, so obviously, um, if we're comparing those two different options, you know, it's user specific. Now that means that if somebody leaves that position and somebody else new comes, then you'd have to actually 
um, the district would have to submit for you know, a new username and then have that access uh, moved over instead of just being able to provide somebody else new credentials. Um, but the individual user accounts, they can still um, be assigned any custom roles that you make. Um, basically, what we're going to talk about next could just as easily be performed with either type of account. All right. So um, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, creating roles and assigning a role to the user account because um, if we're making this so that they can access specific reports, what we want to do is um, give them a role so that they can um, just access what, uh, what reports that um, we want them to. Um, within here, so the, the standard USAS read-only role, it does give access to these reports, but it also gives some other things, right? So it has view access where a read-only user could go, you know, look at certain pages, look at transactions, and uh, probably in, in this case, um, you want to keep it limited to just reports. Like these aren't people that log into the system regularly. Like you may want them to just be able to see just what they need to see to make it easy. Um, oh yeah, I was going to show this when we were looking at the user. Let me open one of these up real quick. So when you're creating your user, and this is where we can kind of do things in whatever order, um, you know, if you are just creating these, if you're going by the same, um, same pattern that we're talking about, same order that we're talking about right now, you would create the user. You can leave the role blank until we create it. And then um, there is a section for filters here. So if, the, um, if this is one of the accounts that came over from USA Security, the filter you would see here. If you're creating a new one, um, there isn't a filter here yet, but we are going to talk about creating those and then assigning that as well. And um, you want to make sure it's enabled. So uh, if this is one of the ones that came from Classic, you could just check this box and then save that up. And for the roles, we are going to system roles. Now, my first, well, maybe not my first option, but the first option we're going to look at is just creating one of these fresh. So um, I would go ahead, create this role. And um, as I scroll through here, there are options that are just access to report. So that, that's all marked with a report at the end. Um, if there's specific things that I, like specific reports I want to give access to, um, let's see. So like activity ledger report, I could um, click and move this over. I can um, hold, let's see, control on my keyboard and select multiple and then move them over. So basically um, any of these permissions that coordinate with reports um, or like objects that I would want to give access to, then I would move those over. And um, so we can see there's like disbursement. So that's going to give access to um, disbursement reports, check reports. Um, your activity ledger is going to be where your financial detail comes from. And uh, there is a screenshot in here with uh, your basic account permissions and everything. But if you need help um, deciding what to put on that role, um, we can certainly um, talk about that if you um, want to put it in a ticket. Um, the other thing that I did want to mention here since I came across it, this encumbrance impact. Re report and view, I have a note in this walkthrough. I would add both of these, especially if you're adding something um, any reports that have a remaining encumbrance on it, because these are used to calculate those remaining encumbrances. Um, so if you don't have those, I've seen it cause problems with reports. And that's, okay, I've got a big yellow note here for that. The other tip we have here, um, so if you are creating one of these roles, like obviously if it's just a handful of these permissions that you're trying to put on it, 
it really, uh, you know, you can kind of just scroll through, pick them out and move them over. But say you want to give them every report access. So this tip, um, if you want to use it, if you think that this is convenient um, for your situation, is it may be easier to modify the USAS uh, read-only role and then just remove the view permissions. Um, once the permissions are updated, you can change the role name and then save it and it'll create a new role. So my USAS read-only, I could come in here and then just go through Click all the ones that have view. I would still leave that encumbrance impact view though. Um, I think that you do still need that. Uh, move these over and then you could continue doing it. And then once I change this name and save it, on my grid, I have my reports example, but I do still also have my USAS re, um, read-only access. So that could come in handy with, you know, other roles too as well if you ever need that. Okay. Our next section here then is to address the account filters. Um, so the role is going to determine which reports the, um, the user has access to. So um, are they going to have a budget summary that they can access? Are they going to be able to get to the financial detail? Um, what's going to show in their grid, um, either on their homepage or if they customize their homepage in the report manager? Um, the account filters are going to determine what accounts will show on those reports. So um, this is where we can narrow them down to just have specific accounts. Some feedback. Okay. Um, this is where we can narrow it down to uh, just showing specific accounts um, that will automatically pull onto their reports. So if they only have, you know, these specific, these two specific cash accounts related to their grant that they should see. Um, we can just go ahead and put this right on their account so that anything they run would be filtered to just include that information. Um, so if they did use the filters in Classic, then um, those will also pull in. Um, so we kind of talked about how those would be connected to the user account, but once we get to this account filters page, we would also see them there. Uh, again, this is something that I would definitely recommend to review. Uh, these could have, you know, old, outdated accounts on them. Um, maybe that needs to be tweaked. Uh, so this whole process, you know, you do want to um, set it up, but also be reviewing your reports and account, um, you know, prior to actually releasing these to um, your users. Okay, let's see. So. This is going to be under the utilities and the account filters. And we can see any existing filters right in our grid, um, or we can go ahead and create a new filter. And to add the accounts, we'll just go ahead and click the plus. And then, um, let's see, so I would just type my account code in here. I'm just gonna pick a random fun special cost center that I have, Oops, not that one. And um, you can add, you know, multiple different parameters here. There is a page where we have um, information on the account filter. So in these sections too, I did put like click here. This will take you right to the account filters page. So creating an account filter and there's a whole bunch of information about um, you know, what you would actually do on this page. So hopefully that will come in handy as well. Um, but basically we're going to add our accounts and then the R is for report or I'm sorry for read only. I think Let me do my hover. Yeah. For read access. It just clicks this report with me because <laughs> for uh, what we're talking about here, you only need read access to be able to um, use this with reports. So uh, you just check mark that and then once you have any accounts um, 
that you want to use for this filter, you just save it up. And we're going to go back and um, assign this to our user account. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Sometimes those take a minute to save. That is something that we are working on currently. So, okay. Um, let's see. So I'm going to go back to my system users. And let me go find, so let's see. We were looking at Jones. So for Jones, now um, when I scroll through this list, I have uh, my reports example. I'm going to use this financial reports one that I created earlier um, since I kind of just added random things just now. <laughs> and um, let's see, my filters, I can um, get to my report one filter. So I'm going to go ahead and then attach those pieces that I made. Now, if I have multiple accounts, if I have multiple uh, individual users, you know, I would go through, assign, um, save this up, and then, you know, get everybody, get all of those accounts um, set appropriately with those access levels. Same thing if I was doing this with the standard accounts. Um, I still come in here, go ahead, assign my role. And then there you go, pretty much first step done. Um, the other thing that we may want to do with these users, um, or basically kind of with the roles that we assign to the user, is if we have any custom reports. Now, um, we're going to look at the actual uh, like examples of reports that you can assign to them, but there, is, you know, there are situations where maybe you have a report definition that you've added to the report manager and you want them to be able to see that too. Um, I'm an admin user in this database, so I can see anything that anybody's added. But if you're not an admin user, you can only see reports that you've specifically imported to your grid or reports that have been shared with a role that you have. Um, so for this example, I have the budget expenditures by month. This is a report that I pulled from the shared uh, public reports library. So if you have something like that, um, that they're using in their database, uh, this icon right here with our little people, if you click that, then this gives you the option to choose which roles to share it with. Uh, so I can come in here. I want to share it with my people that have financial reports, my reports example people. And then when I save this, any users that have either of those roles will now be able to see this on their report manager grid or their homepage. Let's see. Um, next, we're going to look at kind of hopping into that specific account. Let me make sure I have everything set up here since I've kind of been walking through it. Um, oh, well, we are going to kind of talk about this in the next step, but this is going to be important, so we'll roll into it. Um, so once we have this set up here, okay, we've got financial reports, I've got my filter, I'm enabled. So my next step then is to reset the password here. Um, now, once the passwords are set, and um, the next step is to uh, do any customizations that you may want to the account before releasing it to the user. Um, this is something that we had talked about kind of the first time around with setting up these uh, Fisk Web uh, accounts. So I'm not, I mean, you can definitely do this with the individual user accounts if this is the purpose, um, but I'm thinking that this may be more applicable with 
like your if you're setting it to um, your standard accounts. So athletics, activities. So if you have something that's kind of a blanket account, you have multiple people logging into rather than like one specific person that can, um, you know, that maybe you want to train or work with to set up with them for their preference. Uh, these ones, since you might have multiple users that log in, um, you may want to set it um, to like a really standard setup before they um, actually log into the system. So let's see, I'm going to log out of my admin. We're going to stick with Jones though, for the purpose of this example anyways. Okay, now that I'm logged in as Jones, I can see I do have a much more limited menu here. So I basically just have um, some standard things. I have my reports. Um, I can see accounts um, just based on almost out of view on this role. And I have my reports in my main page here. Um, let's see. So yeah, the basic two things that we want to accomplish. Uh, first, we're going to talk about favoriting reports. So that's going to modify that main page, that home page that we have. Um, so if we want them to just have a limited list, like maybe there are five reports that they normally are running in there, we could go ahead, make those favorites so they just see those right off the bat, and then that saves them having to ever go off of that home page. And then we're also going to talk about creating save and recalls. So for the purpose of this example, um, we're going to use a budget summary. Let's pick a couple other ones too, though. Uh, so if I go to my report manager, and, and again, this is something um, that if you do want to get this set up within the account before releasing it um, to, I know maybe this is something you work with, uh, to, with your districts, you know, on setting up. So if you have like a lead that's working on this, um, this could be done probably at either level. Uh, but the report manager, and then once I come in here, I have my favorite checkbox. And so any reports that I want to narrow that home page, uh, narrow down what they see on that home page, I could just go ahead and check on this grid. So let's get a couple going here. And maybe they want to see their, um, like a purchase order detail and maybe some outstanding purchase orders too. Ooh, let's, let's see, let's give them a requisition. Okay, so they can look at their budgets, they can look at their activity, and they can look at their purchase orders. That sounds pretty good. And once I check those as favorites, now when I come to my homepage, I have just this limited list. So by the time your district personnel actually log in, you know, they can see everything I need is right on this main page. That's where you kind of get the similarity to FiskWeb. Um, one thing that I can't believe I forgot to mention at the beginning, but uh, one of the really big perks of this, especially if we're comparing directly to FiskWeb, is the fact that they're logging directly in the system. These reports are going to be real time. They're running exactly what's in there right now. Um, the FiskWeb reports were always overnight. So anything that they put in today, they weren't seeing hit those accounts yet. Uh, so they could literally put in purchase orders, check where they're at, put in more, um, you know, and manage, um, manage appropriately. So this can be really convenient. Um, okay, so once we are narrowed down to our specific reports, then uh, the other idea that, that you can do, again, this is, this whole step is all optional for this, uh, just some ideas to uh, kind of simplify is we have this save and recall that allows you to basically save these report parameters. Um, I know getting used to these reports, especially if these are people who didn't log in, um, you know, at all to the system, um, you know, it takes some getting used to as far as, you know, okay, what do I enter in here? Uh, maybe my sort options, if I want something very specific and custom. So you could come in here and then um, let's say I want to have three different versions of the budget summary that this user is going to use, but I don't want them to have to remember what to type in every time. Um, 
maybe Jones is the high school secretary, so he needs high school accounts, but he also manages student activities. So he also needs access to um, those accounts. Now, the filter that we put on him didn't give him very much um, access, but uh, that was just an example. So in this case, this would probably be somebody with multiple funds or, or um, something like that. So, um, so if we're saying, okay, he has high school and he has something else, but I wanna make sure that he has a way to just look at the high school budgets on this one report when he wants to do that. Uh, so I have maybe like our OPU for the high school, if we filter to that, and let's exclude the zero amount accounts. For my sort, we'll leave this with like a normal budget summary. Um, maybe if you did want it to be, uh, you know, control breaked by the first digit of the object, if you wanted to do any of that in the parameters, you could set that all up um, in this step. And then, Give this a name and once I tab off I can save these parameters. Now when Mr. Jones logs into his account um, you can show him here's how you run a budget summary and then he has this drop down where he can come and say okay actually I want my high school version of the budget summary. Then maybe he wants the student activities version of the budget summary and so all of that you can set up ahead of time um, to kind of make it easy for these users. Let me see, make sure there's nothing else I wanted to hit here. Um, within the report manager here, now they don't really have to go in here. I know we only favorited these template reports, but I guess I should just point out that that report that we shared um, with his role is showing here. So actually let's go ahead and favorite that. And so then that report will um, show us, uh, show on the main page too. If we favorite that, you know, we could do the same thing with any, any of these reports. We have the save and recall option on all of them. Um, the save and recall, you can also change the report option. So if, you know, there should be like a spreadsheet version or a summary report maybe that uh, they may run sometimes, those can also be, um, you know, entered in and then a save and recall created. Now, when it comes to managing these accounts, so this is, this is all set up that we've talked about so far. Um, once you get everything organized, accounts created, um, you're ready to uh, hand those over to the users that are going to be um, logging in, using those reports. Um, how do you manage this going forward? So down the line, you know, somebody leaves or you have a new person that needs access. Um, when it comes to account access, this really is this depends. Um, mostly this depends on your ITC process. Uh, if they are using individual accounts for each user, I'm thinking that this would likely still be handled with your same procedure for, um, for setting up any kind of user. Uh, when it comes to passwords, you know, if it's a password reset, they probably, um, that probably can go by the standard process of whoever is normally resetting passwords um, for the district. For the, standardized, for the standardized accounts, um, this could be managed by the ITC or the district. This Again, this is going to be up to the ITC, but I know with FiskWeb, um, I've seen it before where, you know, if it's that standard account, this is only report access. You know, they can't actually make any changes. So um, this may be something that uh, those credentials are turned over to somebody at the district that, that manages it and then provides the credentials to the employees that need it within the district. So if that is something that's um, part of the ITC policy and that's something that um, the district did in Classic, then that could still be done um, you know, in this situation. When it comes to adding, um, adding new users, let's see. 
Yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. But yeah, my second bullet point here. So yeah, this this is just actually adding new users um, rather than the credentials. Okay, so we already covered that. All right, so next then, um, updating accounts that appear on the reports. This is the filters. Um, if an update is needed to a filter, um, the associated account filter can be modified. So, you know, say it is the following year or it's later in the year. Uh, let me go back to my admin account. The account filters can be modified. So, If I come in here and then this user needs to have another account now because they picked up um, maybe a new account was created or you know they're managing something additional, this can be uh, modified and saved and then that's already attached to the user. So by just updating the account filter, it will give whatever users have that account filter that additional access. Um, this is actually really convenient. This can be done um, you know, if anybody at the district has the USAS manager role, um, so perhaps the treasurer or assistant treasurer, um, this this account filter access is available to them. Um, there are permissions listed here if there's somebody else that you need to um, add access. But what's nice about this is with FiscWeb, you had to go update the parameters. There was um, kind of a more complex process to just change the accounts that were showing on the reports that they had. Um, now, this is something where somebody at the district could easily go in and update that filter, update the accounts. Um, and this may be happening year to year again if they have grant accounts that have a specific um, special cost center. So the, um, there is a link again to the account filter page for how to update those. Um, but the basic process is they would go to the utilities account filters and then just make the change. Next is um, adding a new report to an existing um, set of financial reports. Now, when you're setting up, you know, we saw how you can share a custom report with a role. So, um, if there is a new report that should be shared with anybody that has these financial um, reports to so say there's something else from the reports library or a custom report that was shared with the district, um, at any point in time, they could still go into that report grid, uh, import a report, and then uh, click that share icon to share it with, uh, with that reports role. It's not going to get favorited by default. So then, you know, if they do have people that are just using the favorite reports, they may want to, um, you know, have them go in and check, sorry, check the favorites box. Um, if there's just one user that should have a report, so say maybe they, maybe when you set this up, everybody that, you know, is from all the different departments is working on one financial reports role. So you don't want to share it with the whole role. You only want this one specific user to have it. Um, if that is the case, then you would go to, uh, then basically like you'd have to send that user or if they, if you're allowed, um, if that's your policy to log in as the user in any case, um, maybe if it's like a standard account, um, then you would be able to just go ahead and import that uh, or they would be able to import that to their grid. And then again, favorite if they want. So if that's ever needed, um, that situation is noted in here too. Okay. Um, so that's, that, that is the basics um, for the portion that's more like FISC Um, So basically like if they want it to be just, just like the direct alternate and redesign for FISC Web, those are the steps. <laughs> um, I'm gonna talk about the other options, but I figured this is probably a good point to uh, break for a minute and see if anybody has any questions about any of these steps before we move on.
I'm hearing none. Okay. Well, we'll keep right on going then. Um, the next part is uh, we're going to talk about financial reports via email. These sections are a little bit shorter because the information is kind of um, in different spots in the wiki. So we're going to see a few different links here um, that are going to get us to um, you know, other pages that we can look at. Um, basically, this step is instead of having a login, um, maybe there's, you know, uh, maybe a large district has a lot of users, you know, um, maybe this option, especially if they didn't have FiskWeb and um, maybe they were already sending reports via email, um, if it was custom reports they made internally. Um, so this is basically just scheduling reports that can come from USSR and then automatically just email to a specific person or group of people. Um, before you can proceed with these following steps, in order to be able to send emails from um, from the redesign from USSR, you do have to set up a couple things first. So the first is the email notification services module would need to be enabled. And then um, the appropriate information should be entered in the email configuration. So this is just the basics of like letting your system be able to send email at all. Um, so system modules, and th this may be something that you're um, are already doing on, at, as part of the import. Um, but if it is a district that's never sent email, um, I just wanted to quickly review these options. So, okay, let's see, uh, email notification services. So this is already turned on, it's installed for this district, but I would just wanna double check and make sure um, that that is, that box is checked. Um, if not, this would be a plus sign and I could click that to turn it on. And the other step is the configuration. This email configuration right here. Um, I have a couple different things within here. So the main things that I want to look at is uh, the default from address. So that's going to be the email. Um, when you send these reports, that's going to be the email that appears like it's coming from. Um, this is going to work with your email servers. Um, you're going to put in the port number and the SMTP host. So this is something that um, you'd probably work with your tech department to um, determine what that should be. So that um, usually would be from the ITC. And the email address that this is coming from does have to have permission to be able to send through that server. So um, I would fill that out. The administrator address, I don't know that that's being used for anything specific um, specific at this point in time. So um, you would be good to just fill out the default from address or I've seen a lot of people just put the same address in both of them just in case um, that is ever used in the future. Um, but for now, as long as you have those three fields uh, filled out appropriately, then you should be good. And the first option that we'll talk about is the job scheduler. So the job scheduler has been around for a while. Um, I know that there are quite a few districts that probably have a lot of reports scheduled this way already. Um, what this can be used for is scheduling individual reports to send at a regular interval. Um, this walkthrough is where you want to go if this is something that you want to set up. I put minimal information in this section because this is a full walkthrough um, with all of the details, even has some links to make um, the cron jobs, which are used to determine what interval it's sent on. And um, just has a lot of information here on actually setting this up. Um, the basics is that I could come in here, um, select my report, and then I have this little uh, clock icon at the bottom. I would want to give this a job name um, and the job names do have to be unique. So if you're scheduling multiple budget summaries, you would want to make sure you update this. Um, you know, activities one, if you're sending multiple activities, um, you'd want to have one, two, three. 
but um yeah you don't want that job name to to be the same as something as another report you've scheduled uh, the cron expression that is where we would want to go use one of those websites um it's basically just going to determine how often do i want this to send do i want it to send um once a day uh every monday um or some other uh, like regular length of time send output to so this is where uh, you're going to put in the email address uh, you can put in multiple email addresses with a comma in between um, but that's where i would put just type in the email address and then i would save this um, this is a really simple way to do it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just have this one option with the cron expression um, as far as scheduling it. We're going to look at the budget reports next and we'll see that we have a bit more options with those. Um, once I click save, this little pop up is going to go away. And then um, in order to see this, we would go to um, our utilities and job scheduler grid. And then it would show the job that's scheduled in here. Um, and we can kind of see some um, basic information on, you know, if it's sent or the next time it's going to send. Um, just pretty simple. I do have um, some additional notes down here. So um, can we view it on the job scheduler? Oh, to view it in the job scheduler. So the user that schedules it can see it in their job scheduler. If I'm an admin, I can see all jobs. But if, if another, if, if one person schedules the job and then somebody else wants to see the job, that's not gonna, um, it's not gonna work like that. So you can only, users can only see the jobs that they schedule. Um, to stop a scheduled job, they could delete that row right out of the job scheduler. Um, when we get to the report bundles, I'm going to start highlighting the flexibility of those because um, while this is like a pretty quick and easy way to get this scheduled, especially if you just have one report, um, I don't think that has the flexibility as much as the report bundles do. So if they want to, so say like they need to change the email um, that it's being sent to or they need to change the length of time or something like that, the option with the job scheduler is to delete the job and then start over and schedule a new one. Um, you know, any parameters that were in there, you can't necessarily see. So this is a very simple option, but if you need to change it, like you're just redoing basically. The report bundles on the other hand, um, these can be scheduled, can be used to schedule a group of reports. I mean, you can do one too. You could do one or one or a group of reports to send to district personnel um, via email at regular intervals or on a specific, uh, sorry, or on a specific event. We do have more documentation on the report bundles page. Um, there have been, there was a past Fridays with fiscal too. So if this is a route that you want to take, um, in regards to that, you know, we have actually talked about the process in detail, so I'm not going to go too far into it. Um, we'll look at an example, but um, this is something that um, we've seen before. Uh, but I kind of threw it in here because this can this can be an alternate, you know, for this purpose as well when we're talking about sending reports to uh, district personnel. And let's go. Here. So uh, this can be found under reports and report bundles. And I have a couple like example ones that I kind of threw in here. Um, but basically what you do is you would create a bundle. And I would give it a name. What do I need these other ones? Um, so I can just give it, you know, whatever basic name I want to use internally to look at this. 
and then go find my report. So budget summary. Yes, let's add this. Um, now I can see that I could either do the default report or if I did have a save and recall, um, you know, in, in my instance, and I could just add the save and recall once and then add this to um, my bundle. And once I have it added here, I also can edit the parameters. So this was high school. Let's say we want the middle school. Let's do this too. I can edit my So this, I mean, you have a similar option where instead of um, kind of what we talked about earlier where your user's logging in, maybe they have a couple different versions of a budget summary. You can still do that within these report bundles. Let's do, and then I don't know, you might, I'm gonna do a PU again just for, it doesn't really matter, I'm not really running these. You probably do uh, based on your fund, but I don't have that. <laughs> I don't have the fund code off the top of my head. So we're just going to go ahead and um, add some random parameters there. But for the example, so say you entered the appropriate parameters and then uh, let's do add a financial detail in here. Uh, it's going to be for our, our current year, so this is good. Now, when we were doing the individual accounts, we put the account filter on them, uh, on like our user. So when they ran those reports, they wouldn't have to add a lot of parameters. If I'm scheduling these reports, um, you know, I could I could put an account filter, um, you know, in these parameters. So I would still be able to use you know, a filter in combination with these, um, but any, um, you know, parameters that it does need to be strapped down to based on who I'm sending, who I'm planning to send this to, you know, you would want to enter those at this stage. So once I get all of my reports in there, I'll go ahead and save this bundle up. And then I have a little clock icon for the bundle and I can go ahead and schedule this. Um, the first option that pops up here, so this is the cron, um, using a cron expression, so that's a regular scheduled interval, and that would um, basically use the same kind of expression that we saw with scheduling an individual job. Send output to, so this is where I can go ahead and put my user's email address in there. Um, and for archive type, you always want to make sure to pick this with the report bundles. Um, what this is going to determine is do I want to send multiple emails um, with one report each, or do I want to send one email with multiple attachments? That's probably uh, usually the one that you'll use. Uh, it kind of depends on how many reports you're sending and what the preference is by that user. Um, but once I set that up, what I can do is, um, I don't know if this will let me save without. Yeah, let's go get, we'll go get a cron expression. Ooh, every second, if you want that. So it would look something like that. Um, go ahead and save that up. That did also send it to my job scheduler. So similarly, I could keep an eye on this in my job scheduler. The show is pending because I have it set to send in eight hours. Uh, but really what I'm getting at here is um, with the job scheduler, if you didn't, if you wanted to update that report, you had to just remove it. Um, what I could do here, if I needed this to stop sending, is I could just disable this. Um, 
say this is going to my middle school secretary and I the position um, has has changed to someone else. So, you know, I have a new employee that's going to be doing the middle school uh, managing these now and needs these reports. So um, instead of having to just set up a completely new job, now that I have a bundle, um, I could go ahead and just access my scheduling information and um, I could set it up to um, to send to a new person and I could remove the first job and then just schedule it here um, instead of having to just pick the report or pick the parameters again, um, all of the information within the bundle is going to remain. So even if they're using one report or, or just a couple reports, I think the report bundle so seems like it would be the more convenient option to me. Um, because also I could come in here and modify the parameters on the report. Um, and then the next time it sends, it would use my updated parameters. So especially if they are using this for something like a FISC web replacement, where again, they might have special cost centers that change every year. Um, instead of having to reschedule um, individual reports, they could just come update their bundle and then um, go from there. Uh, Kind of just uh, kept that with sending it on the regular interval with the cron jobs. But the other thing that I could mention here is that they can schedule these on events. Um, an event is uh, going to be like if, you know, maybe they want this to send every time the month is closed. Um, when the district actually changes the posting period from the old month to the new month, then um, that would be the there's a posting period close event. And so instead of having it be a specific time, like instead of having it be every Monday, it could be every time they close the month. Um, so there may be situations where they can use that. There is um, another page in the appendix that walks through how to schedule monthly, additional monthly bundles. Um, so there's definitely a documentation page with the specifics there, um, but definitely multiple options. Immediate, I don't know that they would use that for this purpose. Um, they could if they want to manually kick these off. Um, but yeah, I think probably if you're, I think you would probably be looking to schedule them in this case. So um, likely they would be looking at the cron um, or the event options. And the last option here is financial reports via link. Um, I definitely have talked about this on some previous Fridays with Fiscal. Uh, there's uh, information on the report manager page about the report link. Um, basically, this option is uh, to um, generate the direct report link and then that link can be shared with users so that they can generate a report in real time. Um, where this is done is, let's go to the home page. So when I'm on my um, when I'm on my report, I first have to create a save and recall. And once I have a save and recall, I have this little link icon. And when I click that, I get a link that I can copy, and I can send this to uh, I can send this to a user. I could bookmark this. Um, I think I've heard of some districts like putting these on spreadsheets and then sending them um, out. You could maybe like embed this in a web page. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of options you can use with this. Um, this one, you know, is kind of just like an alternative. Maybe if a district already has a process that this could fit into, I wanted to include it on this page. Um, but basically, when this link is shared, whoever clicks on this link, so say I email this to somebody email this to a principal um, when they click on this link they do have to log in so they will need a USAS user ID and um, what they'll do is um, log in um, and then it does not open USAS it just opens the report um, so that I feel like uh, when you're considering, I mean, unless this does fit into a certain part of the process, um, when you're considering emailing the reports versus maybe emailing a link, 
I think uh, where this is really relevant to me is especially if you're sending sensitive information. Um, this step that we talked about with emailing, you know, this is through email. I wouldn't use this for any reports that have sensitive information on it. Um, you know, if there's a vendor report that has, you know, may have a social as their ID number um, or something like that, you know, you really don't want to use this email step for that. Uh, so watch out for that um, there. But, you know, you could use, potentially use the secure link instead. Um, they just have to be able to have a username and password for USAS. Um, so I think that about does it. I'm just going to hop back one page here. Again, this was in the USSR documentation under the report procedures, and this was the financial report setup. So all of that um, is out there for you to refer to um, after the fact as well. And um, go ahead and open this up for questions one more time. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments? Alrighty. Well, then we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Um, thank you everyone for signing in today and um, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend.